Tests for examination of low back pain. Low back pain is common. There are several clinical tests that are used to assess patients with low back pain. The straight leg raising test, the contralateral straight leg raising test, the femoral stretch test, and the Faber test. There is also movement of the spine tests. Other tests and examinations are myelopathy signs and Waddell signs, which is the non-organic findings. A straight leg raising test. Elevation of a painful limb causes sciatica and radicular pain, which means the pain is going down the leg. The test is positive when the pain occurs with less than 60 degree of hip flexion. When you do that test, you stretch the sciatic nerve, and when the sciatic nerve itself or one of its roots is irritated, the patient will experience pain that will go to the patient leg. This test can be modified by bending the knee. When the knee is bent, the pain gets better due to relaxing the sciatic nerve. Once the patient feels the pain, lower the leg slightly and dorsiflex the foot. Dorsiflexion of the foot will also reproduce sciatic pain in this position. Contralateral straight leg raising test. Elevation of the non-involved leg, which is the contralateral leg, causes back and leg pain on the involved side. And as you can see here in the picture, if you raise the left leg up, the pain will occur on the right side. If this test is positive, then the herniated disc is usually large, extruded, or sequestered. Femoral nerve stretch test or reverse straight leg raising test. This test is rarely done and you're going to try to stretch the femoral nerve by causing hip extension with the patient lying prone or on the side. And when you do hip extension, you stretch the femoral nerve. Positive test means the L3 and L4 nerve roots are involved. Just remember, most disc herniation affect the L5 and the S1 nerve roots which we use the straight leg raising to diagnose it. Therefore, the femoral stretch test is rarely used. The test will stretch the femoral nerve and is positive when the pain is felt on the ipsilateral anterior thigh. Faber test. Faber test helps in diagnosing sacroiliac joint problems. The patient will lie supine on the examination table and the leg of the affected side will be placed into external rotation with the foot going towards the opposite knee. The examiner will press gently but firmly on the flexed knee and the opposite anterior superior iliac crest. Pain in the sacroiliac area indicate a problem with the sacroiliac joint. The position of the leg will be flexion, abduction, and external rotation of the hip. The Faber test is suggestive but not confirmatory test because really anything in the lower back will hurt when you do this maneuver. The sacroiliac joint injection is confirmatory for the SI joint problems. Some people believe in that and some people don't. So if you inject the sacroiliac joint with the numbing medicine and some steroids and the patient gets better temporarily, then the problem is in the SI joint. Symptoms of sacroiliac joint and other back problems can overlap and everything can hurt. The nerves, the tendons, the disc, the facet, 
the ligaments, the muscles, the nerve irritations. The examiner have to have a detailed plan and work through algorithm. And if the patient point towards one side of the lower back and favor test is positive, it's probably a good idea to inject the SI joint and see the response of the patient in addition to other methods of treatment. Other methods of treatment, it's up to you. When do you give the injection? It's up to you. It's your clinical judgment that decide the treatment. Movement of the spine tests, range of motion, flexion, pain in the lower back with lumbar flexion suggests a disc-related disorder. Pain with lumbar extension suggests the patient may have a spinal stenosis of the lumbar spine or a spondylolisthesis. Patient with a spinal stenosis, a spondylolysis or a spondylolisthesis or facet disease will demonstrate pain with extension of the lower back. When you extend the spine, you will decrease the foraminal area. When you flex the spine, you will increase the foraminal area. Because of the pain experienced by the patient with extension of the spine, people suffering from spinal stenosis will have relief from leaning forward, flexing their spine, and they call that the shopping cart phenomena. What are myelopathy signs? Clonus sign, Pepineski sign. A positive clonus sign or Pepineski sign indicate an upper motor neuron lesion that will not occur from a lumbar spine pathology. Also, somebody have gait disturbance means he got myelopathy. So you need to check the thoracic and cervical spine for spinal cord involvement, even if they have a huge disc on the lumbosacral MRI. The lower lumbar spine deals with nerve roots, not with the spinal cord. How do you check for clonus? Non-voluntary sustained movement of the ankle muscles with firm, passive, continuous stretch. How do you check for Babineski? The test is performed by stimulating the outside part of the sole of the foot. The test is positive when you run a sharp instrument along the lateral border of the forefoot from the calcaneus and this produces extension of the big toe and fanning of the other toes. The test is negative if no reaction occurs or if the toes all bunch up. Waddell signs, non-organic findings. It's extremely controversial. Waddell signs is a set of physical signs used to indicate if chronic low back pain is due to non-organic or psychological components. There are five categories of tests included in Waddell signs. Simulation test, tenderness test, flip test, non-anatomic weakness, and sensory findings, overreaction. Non-organic physical exam findings determine if the patient is over-exaggerating or overreacting with non-anatomic findings. The clinician should be alert to the possibility that the patient may be exaggerating the symptoms, possibly for a secondary gain. On the other hand, the clinician should not be accusatory and different patients can perceive their pain differently. We don't understand pain, we don't understand how it is produced, and we just can't accuse patients. Thank you very much. I hope this video was helpful.